So welcome back to another uh, x-ray uh, segment session um, with SPS countermeasures training in regards to cabinet x-ray systems. This one's going to be a little unique um, because not too many people actually do this or even think this x-ray machine can actually do that. But we're going to give you a, an example of what it's like to x-ray ordnance um, with one of these x-ray systems. So the application for this would actually be somewhere in customs and border protection where you're attempting to ship arms illegally or some of nature uh, into some you know, other country, which happens you know, throughout the world. So people are actually using x-ray systems like this to um, x-ray baggage, uh, crates, things of that nature. And, and in occasions, if you identify something that's potentially ordnance, if you've never seen that before in an x-ray machine, it can be actually pretty surprising. Now, a lot of ordnance actually looks like a big bullet, so and that's not too much of a problem of able to be able to identify that. But if your guys have not been trained to look for this and that's something that you're wanting them to do, you definitely have to expose them to images of ordnance so they'll be able to identify it and, and draw attention to it that this shipment or this crate or this item has something potentially wrong with it. So, and this can be a difficult challenge because having the ordnance to be able to x-ray to get the images to train your people can be uh, pretty challenging, unless you call SBS countermeasures training, which we have that and we can do it for you. So the first one I'm gonna show to you is kind of, it's actually a problem we run in our portable x-ray class for our bomb technicians. And they use a portable x-ray like this. This is a golden XR150. It's a 150 kV system, but it's a pulse generator, where this system right here is what we call a constant potential generator. The, the best way to describe the difference between pulsed and constant potential, pulsed is a strobe light, constant potential, potential is just turning the light on and the lights on, where the lights on is generating x-ray. Each pulse that's coming out of this is gonna be shooting x-ray. Now, bomb techs have portable systems because they have to be able to go to where the item's located, they can't move it, and then they'll place a panel behind it with their x-ray in front of it and they'll shoot the x-ray image. So this one's putting out 150 kV, this x-ray system and most cabinet checkpoint x-ray systems are going to be on the average between 140 kb or most of them now today are moving up to about 160 kb so this is a 6046 si x-ray machine i actually got this on ebay for 1400 it had all the bell the bells and whistles all the software um all the auto detection tip ots had everything on it i got it for 1400 but this one's gonna be operating at 160 kV. So here's the problem that I typically run with bomb techs and what they're trying to do with this is they're trying to shoot an X-ray of this to see what's going on on the inside of this projectile because this is potentially a suspect, a chemical type weapon. And the top of this here is where the fuse is at. It's actually been sheared off, which makes the problem even much more challenging because they have to try to figure out what kind of fuse this is if they don't know what this is. And a lot of you out there, if you're bomb tech or EOD tech, you should know what this fuse is. Okay, this is, this is an old school problem and you should know what it is. So with this round, it's got a burster tube inside of it and it's got a liquid, which is the chemical, and they're trying to identify uh, the burster tube to see through it or basically penetrate it. And they're also trying to see if they can see the liquid line on the inside of this, this round to see if it actually has a liquid in it. And it's a very challenging problem with this uh, portable x-ray here because these, these are uh, unculminated beams and they have massive amounts of scatter associated with it. And most bomb techs don't know how to deal with scatter or don't even make an effort to deal with scatter. Where this system has a culminated beam and there's little to absolutely no scatter uh, gonna be associated with this. So we're gonna see what the difference is in the image with uh, this and I'll also put up on the, uh, on, the, on the screen for you an image of what you see with the portable x-ray. And literally for them to do this, they have to blast it constantly uh, with a maximum number of pulses to try to penetrate this. If they only knew how to deal with, with scatter, uh, they wouldn't have to do that. You could shoot right through it and, and be able to see it just as easy as this one's gonna do. I already gave it away. So we're gonna take this round, we're gonna run it through this system, and nobody in their right mind would think that this checkpoint x-ray system is going to be able to do this problem well let's figure out and see if it can all right so we'll put it on the belt hopefully it doesn't roll run it through the x-ray 
and see what we get. So the high density alert on this automatically alarmed and stopped it inside the tunnel. So you could use your automatic detection features to literally stop items inside the tunnel to make sure they don't come out the other side, especially if you're doing a people checkpoint. This is an excellent feature that Smith's Detection has, and I'm not sure of very many other vendors that have, uh, have this. Uh, it's a great feature if you're running a people checkpoint and you don't want their bags coming out the other side. Because everybody else who's not an airline doesn't have all these fancy schmancy um, covers and everything else with the secondary screening station. They just probably got an extra machine where it comes right out the other side. If the person went through the walk-through metal detector, they have access to the bag. Okay, that's your atypical courthouse or government building that's got an x-ray system. It is nothing like what they see at TSA and they're going to have a single generator x-ray system like this or maybe a dual generator. None of the CT stuff that they're using. All right, so we took the x-ray. We're getting an extremely dark image. And for those of you that didn't know, that this light blue box, which is not explained in the manual, it's misdetection, is actually telling you that x-rays are being blocked. Um, it, there's no adjustment for it. You can't turn it on or turn it off. Um, you can change the color of it. I think you can. Uh, and the newer software may allow you to actually turn it on or turn it off. But they don't barely, really uh, describe to you what this is and what it's actually telling you. But what it's telling you is the x-rays are not coming on the other side when they're shooting through the generator up to the detector panels in the system. It's not getting any energy. So that's why you get a black image like this. So it's not penetrating this item. And with the Smith's detection x-ray system and all these cabinet systems, you have no way to try to increase the amount of x-ray that's being shot at it um, to potentially get more or better penetration. So your x-ray image is what it is. However, all x-rays like this do have what you call a high penetration capability. And that's typically a button that's gonna be on your keyboard. And on the Smith's detection, it's in the actual image keys and it's number B6. So we're gonna press that button and see what it does. And lo and behold, I have actually been able to penetrate this, completely see the burster tube all the way inside there. And that right there is actually the liquid line that's inside of this, uh, this item. So I was actually pretty amazed when I ran this through just on a whim um, and then pushed the high penetration. And this image is literally better than what we typically get with this XR150 pulse generator uh, because it's a constant potential. Uh, it's a little bit higher KV, so it shouldn't be that much of a difference um, as far as penetration just for 10 KV. But the huge difference on why this system is able to get such a good image is the scatter. This one doesn't have the scatter that you're gonna get when you're shooting out in the open on a concrete down or on a gravel ground or a dirt ground. The amount of scatter and uh, that, that massive amount of scatter is going to absolutely uh, make your image much poorer with a portable system and why they struggle so badly uh, with these portable systems on trying to punch through uh, something like this. When this system at 160 kV blew this one away, literally. And now what's amazing about this is that the bomb technicians have detector panels that have resolution that blows this machine away. Now this, these, all these cabinet x-ray systems, it's one of my biggest complaints about them, is they have very poor line pairs per millimeter resolution. And we're, lock, we're talking most of these are gonna be about 1.0 or somewhere in that range. So what it means is you start zooming in and it starts pixelating and turns into a big pixel blobs. That means you've got very poor resolution. Where the bomb tech systems, you can zoom in on stuff like a thin wire and it never pixelates out because they have such excellent uh, detectors inside of their detector uh, panels that gives them much better image quality. But even with that, when you're shooting x-rays, there's a way to shoot them that you're going to reduce the amount of scatter. This is one of the reasons why hospitals have what we call a culminator on the front of their x-ray machines. They do it for one reason, to reduce the amount of x-ray being exposed to the person, but the other reason and the other thing it does is it massively reduces the scatter, especially when you're shooting through a person, you want to reduce the scatter because it, it'll, do, it'll make your image much worse or much poorer. So this is pretty amazing that this system was able to do that. I'll try to zoom in a little bit more. I think I'm zoomed in 
pretty far here to let you guys see this. I'll even put it up on the screen, I probably have. But I am utterly blown away at how well this works in comparison to watch Bontex with these little portable X-ray systems trying to run this same problem. And what they'll typically do is they'll go get the XRS3, which is 270 kV, because you know, more is always better, okay? More is always better and they'll just start shooting more x-ray at it and still they kind of, it, it does work better, but you still don't get this with 160 kV. And the reason this one's able to do it is there's no scatter, okay? You reduce the scatter, your image quality absolutely improves drastically. All right, so we're gonna try another piece of ordnance for you. Um, we'll go ahead and take a look at this next one and we'll see if you can figure out what it is. Okay, again, the system actually automatically detected and said that this area has a high level of, of absorption and it's, it's blocking the x-rays. But what you're looking at is a Soviet anti-tank Sager missile. Um, this one's inert, all this stuff's inert. But that's what this is. I actually got this on um, Gunbroker. You wouldn't be surprised that you can buy on Gunbroker. Uh, but again, this x-ray image compared to what I've shot with portables is pretty amazing, okay? I never really thought that I could shoot ordnance and be able to penetrate and get this image quality that I'm getting with it right now, and I'm actually blown away. And this is why I'm showing you this, because it is an option if you've got a cabinet x-ray system to be able to x-ray ordnance and actually get a pretty damn good image uh, and not run into all the scatter problems that you're gonna run into with these portables. So it's pretty amazing. The other thing you need to think about is that uh, educate yourself about how to reduce scatter uh, so you can end up with an image like this. This is amazing. And the other nice thing about these systems is they give you materials discrimination and it's way more accurate um, than the portable systems. The portable systems are horrible at doing materials discrimination. They like to call it um, organic detection absolutely not it is absolute crap and you cannot rely on it okay you can't rely on it at all because they're trying to say that the orange is going to be an explosive which is bullshit because the only explosives that show up in that small window is between about seven uh about right around seven just in that range and the zero to ten the rest of it is not fucking explosives okay so there is no such thing as an organic detection so if you get one of these portable x-ray vendors say, uh, yeah, we can do organic detection, just slap him really hard and tell him, uh, John House said there's no such thing as uh, organic detection, because there's not. There's a thing called materials discrimination. It's standardized based on the ratios. And when you see the color blue, you know that that is a metal, okay? That's what it's telling you. It's pretty accurate. When you start seeing the color green, that's telling you it's an inorganic or mixed material. And this is actually the plastic um, that the Russians use, they call it like a Bakelite plastic uh, on a lot of their uh, ordnance. So really good, great image quality. Um, resolution isn't ideal, especially if you're looking at it from a bomb tech perspective, but if there was an explosive charge inside here, um, which would be up here where the cone and the warhead's gonna be at, you would see a, a definite orange color to let you know that that explosive charge is inside there. Uh, which is another great uh, capability of these cabinet x-ray systems. So don't think you can't x-ray ordnance with one of these cabinet x-ray systems because you can. Uh, it actually works pretty well. And if you're in a pinch and you want to take a look at something and, and see what's inside of it, um, you know, of course, you probably don't want to move something that is a UXO, of course. But if you've got something that you want to take a look at, um, especially from customs and border detection side of the house, um, you can use these systems to accurately look at these uh, ordnance items and even tell what's going on inside of them. Uh, so if you need training on um, x-raying ordnance, especially if you're either a state and local bomb tech, you want to learn more about that, or if you're a customs or border type person that's, that's making sure that armaments don't get into um, your country or another country, reach out to us. We have the stuff um, to be able to do that for you. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick lesson on x-ray ordinance with a cabinet x-ray system. Thanks.